In the meantime, please accept this in appreciation for bringing this matter to my attention. Perhaps it will be of service to you in your travels. One more thing. I found this book hidden away in the ruins of Fornost. It looks to be quite old. Ah, now this is writing of an altogether more wholesome sort. This was not made by any minion of Sauron, but rather by the men of Arthedain, likely before the fall of Fornost. You could be right, for we found it in a chamber that had been long sealed. Can you make out any of the writing? Indeed. It seems to be a personal journal. And here is a name inscribed. M-A-L. Why, this appears to be a work of Malbeth, the seer of Arthedain. Malbeth? Never heard of him. Many of the Dúnedain race are gifted with foresight, but none more than Malbeth. He predicted the final destruction of the kingdom of Arthedain, which befell exactly as he had foretold. I will examine this work carefully. Who knows what other visions are here recorded? It may be that we will find something of value to us in this time of trouble. You did well in bringing this to me. Take this in way of thanks. Happy to have been of service. Thanks and goodbye. Greetings, my friend. Is there anything more you can tell me about this mission to the Etten Moors? Only that the Etten Moors are a dangerous place at the best of times. The danger will be that much greater if the orcs and trolls are being organized by an outside force. You and your friends will need to have your wits about you. If we do find the enemy mustering there, what should we do about it? You will have to determine your best course of action. When dealing with the foul folk, it is always wise to eliminate any strong leader you may find. For without someone who can enforce discipline, they will often fall to fighting amongst themselves. If the enemy is mustering in the Etenmores, try to recover any clues that may help us determine who is behind it and where they may be found. Who could raise such a muster? Agendaur would be my first guess, but it could also be a strong orc chieftain, or perhaps an unusually cunning troll. At worst, one or more of the Nazgul may have made their way there, if any of their mounts survived the flood we unleashed upon them. Whatever may be happening there, you will know of it. Farewell, Master Elrond. Ah, Farin. I am glad you are here. I feel I must apologize to you. When I was told a dwarf had appeared on the borders of the Shire asking to join the Dúnedain in their watch, I was suspicious. I instructed Halvarad to keep a careful eye upon you, fearing you were a spy. Clearly, he grew to trust you. And after all you have done, I have as well. I am sorry to have doubted you, my friend. Apology accepted. Seems we dwarves are often mistrusted. It hardly seems fair. But then I guess you rangers have good cause to be suspicious of strangers. Perhaps. But we should also remember there are others in the world who are willing to serve. I am glad you chose to do so. Word is you've traveled a great deal. Is there anything you can tell me of the Etnors? Only that it is a dangerous and unforgiving place. My own grandfather Alador was slain by trolls in the Etnors. It is important we learn if the enemy is active in the moors, but we do not send you there lightly. Be on your guard at all times while you venture there. So, you go now to claim the throne of Gondor. Above all, I go to help Frodo fulfill his quest. For unless the ring is destroyed, Gondor will soon fall, king or no king. Good luck to you.
foreign. It is good of you to seek me out. You're a stout dwarf, like all of Durin's folk. And your courageous deeds have shown your worth. When we first spoke, you said you recently passed through the Etenmoors. Can you tell me anything more of them? It is a rough and empty land, home to many trolls. I passed through with great haste, for I needed to reach Rivendell as quickly as I could. You said there was no sign of trolls. I saw neither trolls nor fresh signs of them, and that disturbs me more than encountering one. I doubt they've all packed up and left. Mindless brute creatures they may be, yet they can... Do you think he's mustering the trolls for an attack? That is my fear. I would gladly be proven wrong. But my heart misgives me that somewhere in the Etenmoors, you will find them gathering and being prepared for war. We must know. Such a force could be sent against Rivendell, perhaps in hopes of capturing the Ring. I'll get my friends and we'll head for the Moors. If there's something to find, we'll find it. Even in strange surroundings, you can trust a dwarf to find his way to a forge. You are welcome in my smithy, foreign of Erebor. I've found a few things on my travels that you might be interested in. Take a look. Ah, these are work of Westernese, the lost land of Numenor. The men who forged these items were skilled indeed. You have the makings of a unique weapon here. Although these components were never part of a single work, I believe you have assembled everything I would need to make it so. The finished weapon would undoubtedly carry some elven qualities. What do you mean by that? Only that with a work such as this, the finished product is liable to reflect the nature of the smith who assembles it. If, for example, a dwarven smith were to complete this weapon, it might possess quite different qualities from the weapon I would create. I'd like to see what an elven smith can do. Go ahead, if you're willing. Very good. I will get started at once. There, it is finished. May this serve you well, my friend. Even in strange surroundings, you... you are... How is it that an elf of Rivendell knows my name? News travels swiftly in this household. I suspect everyone in Imladris has heard of your exploits by now. But such adventures are often hard on one's weapons and armor. Perhaps you have need of my services? I should be going. Son of Thranduil, King of the Woodland Realm. 
And I believe you are a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. That's right. I'm Farron of Erebor. Strange meeting a wood elf here, when I so seldom see them at home. It is true. The distance between our two realms is not great. Yet it seems we seldom have dealings with your folk. If things are cold between our folk, it is not the fault of the dwarves. Oh? I had not heard the fault lies with the elves. Oh, let me refresh your memory then. Your father imprisoned our king, Thorin Oakenshield, when he found him lost and starving in Mirkwood. Your Thorin refused to give a good account of himself. We who dwell in Mirkwood do not keep our borders safe by trusting every ragged wanderer who trespasses in our realm. So, now you insult one of our most revered kings. If I were not a guest in an elf lord's hall, I would have more to say about that. As usual, you overreact. Dwarves and their stiff necks. You may be useful allies at need, but I will never understand how anyone could be friends with a dwarf. When you left Erebor to stand guard on the Shire, Gimli and I feared we might be seeing the last of you. Now I hear you stood with the Rangers in the battle against the Nazgul at Sarn Ford, and bested an orc chieftain at Fornost. Good work! I can't take all the credit. I had Andriel, an elf of Rivendell, and the Ranger Aerodan at my back. Reminds me of the old days when dwarves, elves, and men fought together in the Battle of the Five Armies. It does my heart good to see you, kinsman. But something dire must have happened to bring you all the way here. All is well enough at the mountain, don't fear. The enemy servant makes threats, but we will stand fast. Gimli is hereabouts, and he can give you the details. We came at the bidding of King Dane. With the enemy seeking news of Bilbo, Dane thought we should come to Elrond for counsel. I never imagined what I'd learn when we got here, but it may be wise to say no more. Gandalf has told us of Frodo's burden. It's no wonder Sauron's 